We would like to talk about fighting corruption uh, with when it comes to permits for business and acquisition of other licenses as those have a direct correlation with the success or development of uh, and economic development as well of private businesses here in Ghana. We find that there are some delays here and there and that also affects uh, the businesses in terms of their financials because of the hefty costs they would have to pay in order to uh, obtain these permits and licenses. And so this morning, we would like to better understand uh, what is going on as the Private Enterprise Federation comes together with other agencies to combat the co uh, corruption that comes with getting these permits for businesses. And joining us this morning, Nana Osei Bunsu, who is the CEO of the Private Enterprise Federation here in Ghana, as well as Mrs. Beauty Emifa Nate, who is the Executive Secretary of the Ghana Anti-Corruption Coalition. You're welcome to New Day. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. How are you? We are fine. You're great. Good. Wonderful. Um, the Private Enterprise um, Federation is one that I'm sure not many people know about. And even if they do, they might not exactly understand what you do as a federation. So I think to break the ice, we can better understand to set the tone for the conversation. It's unfortunate that a lot of people don't know about Private Enterprise Federation mm. when it has been around for almost 23, 24 years. Mm. It came about when the under the uh, uh, presidency of uh, Mr. Rawlings, mm -hmm. uh, when they had difficulty engaging private sector because at that time there were so many, and the biggest four were the Association of Ghanaian Industries, AGI, AGI. the Ghana Employers Association, GEA, mm -hmm. the uh, Ghana Chamber of Commerce, GCCI, and then the uh, Federation of Association of Ghanaian Exporters, and each were in their own silos. Yeah. So reaching a consensus point of discussion between government and private sector, I think from my understanding was a little onerous and very difficult. Mm. So be between the, these groups, they decided they needed a focal voice of private sector. Mm -hmm. And so they put their heads together with the support of government, I understand that the uh, leadership of Mr. P.V. Obin okay. and also the USAID, the Private Enterprise <laughs> Foundation at the time mm. was created to be the voice of private sector, the uh, advocacy lead for private sector. That's how we created. Oh. So our main core mandate is advocacy, looking to influence policy formulation based upon research findings that provide empirical data to support the position, and also capacity building for businesses, networking, making businesses uh, you know, uh, perform and become profitable. Mm. So that is the essence of what we, we are mandated to do. But as we grow and grow and grow, now from the four original founding fathers, later on the uh, Bankers Association became a, also a member of the founding team. Okay. Then we have now grown to be 19 of the majority business uh, association. We do not okay. accept individual businesses as uh, members. Um, we individual only, businesses meaning uh, uh, sole proprietorships? Uh, yes, uh, any business, uh, whether it's uh, formal or informal. So okay. far as your individual KYZ corporation and all, no, we okay. only accept umbrella business associations and chambers. Okay, so you have to be a member of the association in order we, to be a part yeah, of so the federation. Your, our right? representation of you is coming through the, the, association. Uh, the association. Right. That's right. how we, we operate. Okay. And uh, we look at how things can improve the constraint business of our member associations to become profitable, become competitive, and to create wealth and jobs. Oh, amazing. So it means then that uh, it is in your interest to boost, you know, the profitability of these businesses. Yes, yes. And that's is. the reason uh, this whole project yeah, has yes, come yes, about. Yes. Uh, tell us a, b a bit about the inception of the project and how far you've the, come the with it as well. The project became necessary because uh, over the years, Private Enterprise Federation had done some research as to the licensing and permit requirements. We had complaints for our consumer businesses that whenever they're looking for permits, it takes a, some donkey years to get it. And sometimes, you know, some unsavory demands are made and all. So looking at the terrain, we identify about 145 license permits and uh, certificates that were required on businesses. 145? Yes, in our country. But they're seven sectorial. You don't exactly. have to meet all 145. Exactly. It depends on which sector What's you are. What's the minimum in. you've seen for any seven. sector? Seven. seven. Okay. Seven is cross-sectorial. That the seven includes the register generals. Okay. That is a big uh, animal, so we, exactly. set, it's we segregate that on the side. Okay. The remaining six, the town and country planning, office inspectorate, 
EPA uh, fire service, you know, fire service, EPA has two town country plans. Some have permit before you become, you get a certificate. So when you add them all up, it comes to seven. The uh, district assembly. The yeah. district assemblies come under the construction permit and business permit. That okay. comes on the Ministry of Local Government. Mm. That is also two. To even break, a, a, you know, a brick on the street, yeah. you need a permit. That's true. Yeah. And those are the kind of things that, looking at that, we decided that how is it, uh, this, you know, uh, uh, organized? Okay. How do the agencies perform? Yeah. And they, they came to conclusion that the agencies themselves had problems. Yeah. Resource, human, and financial. Mm. So if they're charging the private sector to pay for services and they're not able to deliver efficiently and, you know, and the best way the private sector will want, how do we get the agencies to become efficient? How do we work together? Exactly. And that's what started some years back. Okay. Then after identifying all these things and working with the agencies, it became necessary that the agencies are existing under authority of a statute. Okay. The statute calls for operating guidelines called the service delivery charge. Okay. So their service delivery charter is based upon the per permitted activities under the statute. And some okay. of these statutes have not seen any reforms going back 1945, 1963 mm. and all. So we decided, working with the agencies, how do we enhance the procedures <sighs> of uh, their performance? And that is your service charter. Okay. Uh, we selected three. Mm. The EPA, Office Inspectorate, and uh, now we call LUPSA, okay. Land Use and Spatial Planning. That is, used to be the uh, you know, town and country planning. Mm. So looking at what they had, working with them, we have now delivered a, a, a draft service charter, okay. a common service charter that they all have a common platform. Right. Equal, to how do you treat your clients? How do you disseminate information? Yeah. How do people get to know about you? Yeah. What are your requirements and all? So with that, then mm. we have the peculiarities. This one has, the fire will have something different than the EP and all. Okay. So okay. now we have adopted a, a efficient service delivery charges, charges that exactly. had been agreed upon between the institutions and us. Okay. But you see, in the essence of getting the licenses, I said two things. The service charter have their own uh, inadequacies okay. that maybe it takes four days or 25 days. Yes. Or, do we really need that number of days? Mm. Do we even need that procedure? Mm -hmm. If that's the case, how do we make it efficient? Okay. Then the other side of the coin, and that is why we have the administrative corruption. Right. But individuals Which? sitting in the chair who was supposed to administer this procedure will tell you, okay, come tomorrow. Yeah. You come tomorrow, you say, come the next day. I think you get the message that you have to put weight on your application. Yeah. What kind of weight you don't know. So when you conducted the whole research we have, to we have find out what exactly is going yeah. through all through the machinery yes. Yes. and okay what the problems are. We'll come back to discussing okay. a bit of that okay. and then all the delays and all of that. Okay. But uh, Beauty, I like he mentioned the uh, service charters and I would like for you to help me uh, understand how that would impact on the business operations. Okay, so thank you very much. Uh, when we talk about corruption. Corruption has both the demand side and the supply side of it. Right. So enable uh, us to address that. It's important to tackle both ends. Okay. And we have always encouraged businesses to transact business with integrity. So we have this business integrity forum where we encourage businesses that it's important to tackle or engage in integrity in terms of business. Okay. And then it's also provides opportunity uh, for you to have competitive and transparency in what you do. So as part of that, we also recognize, as Nana mentioned, mm -hmm. yeah. how the challenge is also from the public sector yeah. in terms of the engagement and the delays. Yeah. And um, as we all know, when it comes to businesses, uh, time is really money, yeah. so the longer you delay them in terms of accessing mm -hmm. um, opportunities or maybe services, yeah. then the, the f more frustrating it becomes. Yeah. And then sometimes it pushes businesses or compels them uh, to pay yeah. for things that they shouldn't even have paid for. So the service charter in a way becomes more of a social contract between the service provider and the client okay. or the, the person who is going to assess the service. 
because the service charter will give opportunity for the entity or the public sector to outline what the services are, what they give. They also look at, uh, in terms of timeline, mm. how long are you supposed to assess this from, right. from so if it, for instance, if you are supposed to assess it in 10 days, exactly. it's clearly stated as 10, 10 days. days. So in terms of assessing the facility or the, um, the permit, yeah. if you go beyond the 10 days, then you yeah. have cause to complain. Right. But where you don't know the duration, it becomes a problem. Mm. Another interesting part of the service charter, when it is very comprehensive, also gives information about the services you are providing. Okay. It also gives information regarding even complaints. Okay. Where okay. That's you feel that uh, you you have not been fairly treated, treated exactly. then you have procedures for complaint. And mm. where is corruption, you also have procedures to complain. Okay. And mind you, it also have the contact person of um, the co contact of the person that you can complain to. So that also helps for people who have challenges uh, to give um, information to whoever is in charge mm. about the services and the um, issues that they are having. Yeah. So we believe that if you put together a good service charter and then make it public, it shouldn't also be a hidden document. Mm. That is right. important because right. sometimes you have some institutions who say we have service charter, but, but you, you don't can't access it. You can't access it. It's so not on their measure. website. Exactly. It's not displayed publicly. Mm at their facility yeah. so when people go there they don't they even expect. know it yeah. so it's important to also advertise it publicly and mm. if possible even in languages that people will understand yeah. for instance if you are um, a public institution at a local community where english may not be the medium yeah. of of the understanding language. for yeah. uh, the citizens then you would have to make some efforts to reduce it to uh, a form that people will understand. understand. So it's important. And another thing I would like to also add is that we also have people who had service charters for 10 years mm. ago. Yeah. But things are changing. Exactly. So it should be uh, a, a, a working document that you always visit update. and then update exactly. it and if possible revise it mm. and, and make it known. So mm. that is the essence of uh, service charter. It helps yeah. both the person who is assessing the the service yeah, and the well person the who is also provider. giving the service right. to so that nobody is shortchanged exactly. and, and then frustrations are minimized because yeah. if you say it's 10 days it then be 10, days. 10 days and or then less. or less if possible <laughs> or less Indeed. if possible so yes. what part do yeah. we then have to play i believe that uh, everybody every all the citizens have a part to play in all of this so a uh, word uh, out there for all of us what part do we also have to play in pushing this project Okay, so let, as let, 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 me, let me come in here. Okay. That's demand driven. Okay. When people are not aware, they're not going to demand that. Mm. So what we this sensitization and communication is to alert businesses as well as the community yes. that this is what is going on. So right. if you're going to assess the service, these are things you have to look up. Mm. And then you have rights mm. to demand. You see, Ghanaians don't demand things. These that are is the, true. We this, just this, take these are requirements. Are. And you paying mm. a fee for this service. But then they give you as if you are apologetic for coming right. there. And that right. is one of the ways the sensitization is to create awareness, both public and the citizenry, that these are the things that are happening. And if you go there, you don't see the service chart displayed in the premises. You can demand and you can demand that I need that in writing. Beautiful. And if there's anything else, I need a contact person, his name and the telephone yes. number. So you can make the complaints. Great. Yeah. So if we want uh, any more uh, information, I understand there's going to be a launch as well. If we want any more information, um, are you on social media or is it on your website? Yes, so it's on our website, www.pef.org. Org, okay. org dot G -H. Okay. Yes, that is our website. All right. The information and will be there. And also the lunch will be on uh, 6 February. Okay. Uh, kind of just about maybe 11 days or something. Away. And right. then after that, we have a, uh, an awards night to see mm. the agency that had actually created the more reforms and are now using the reforms to reach out to the private sector. Beautiful. Yes. Wonderful. Yeah. So on the safe. And uh, if we want any more information, we can log on to yes. your website. I think this is a, a good project, a good initiative, and hopefully we have a lot more of our private sector uh, or private businesses going in 
to uh, you know legalizing their businesses. I've been speaking to Nana Osei Bonsu, who's the CEO of the uh, PEF, which is the Private Enterprise Federation, as well as Mrs. Beauty Emefa Nate, the Executive Secretary of the Ghana Anti-Corruption Coalition. You're encouraged to also attend the launch and to find out a bit more about the service charters. Continue to demand and not just accept anything that's below standard.